Hey guys, how you doing? My name's Connor. You are watching thrivingminimalist.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm super excited about today's video because it is on the solar system that we just installed in Winnie. I'm gonna break this video up into six chunks. We're gonna break these six chunks up into these categories. First is what is solar and how does it work? The second is how much does it cost? The third, how much power can I actually get from it? What can I actually run with it? The fourth, is it easy to install? The fifth, is there any maintenance? And finally, number six, what do you need to install the system? I have created a really extensive article answering these same questions I'm gonna answer here, but in much more detail with links provided to all the products that I used and some additional ones in case you wanna go a different route. All right, let's jump into it. Number one, what the heck is solar? Personally, I find that the scientific details of solar conversion are not that interesting to me, and I know that for some of you that is really yummy, delicious stuff, so I encourage you to go research it. But for the like basic understanding, we are converting sunlight energy into usable AC electric energy that powers your basic household electronics. So my basic explanation and understanding is that photons from the sun cause these electrons in the phosphorus and the silicone inside of these solar panel units to break and bond and break and bond and break and bond and break and that process generates electricity. It's a relatively slow process and doesn't generate a ton of electricity which is why solar panels need to be of a certain size and we need to give them a certain amount of time to actually produce us usable energy but that's the basic understanding of it. We take the sun, the power of the sun and like put some chemicals in a little thing and boom we get electricity and that part does really interest me. That part is super cool. So because this process is slow, we can't simply hook up to a solar panel and say plug in our phone or something like that. We have to have some source that stores the power and that's where these automotive batteries come in. And that's the most common thing that people use for solar systems are either 12 volt batteries, which is what you have in your car or six volt batteries, which is what golf carts have, some lawn mowers, some other equipment. So this this panel is making all of this electricity and it's slowly trickling in and recharging these batteries. When you're ready to, say, plug in your phone to something, you plug in your phone and you extract the power from the battery. So as you use electricity, the battery's power goes down as the sun is out and shining on your solar panel unit, the storage electricity inside of the batteries go up. There are two other components of the system that are necessary. One is the control box and that controls how much electricity is being allowed to go into the batteries so that they're not overcharged because if they're overcharged then they slowly peter out and die. The other component that you need is an inverter and the inverter is responsible for changing the DC power into AC power and the AC power is what all of our basic electronics run off of. So in order to run your solar system you need these four basic things. You need the solar panel, you need the control box, you need an inverter, and you need batteries. We're going to get into that stuff and the specifics of that later on. Number two, how much does it cost? This is a big question for people. On the solar system that I installed here in Winnie, it was a total of $609.98. Just like anything else, if you spend more money on things, you can get higher quality stuff. You can get a bigger system. You know the deal. The more money you put out, the better the stuff is going to be. In general, this is true. If I was going to recommend a system to someone, I would, I would really recommend what we have have as the setup. So let's talk about the breakdown really quick. I got the solar panel in a kit. So I got the solar panel, I got some wires, and I got the control box for $175. I got all that stuff on Amazon. Then I went on to a website called Apex, apex.com, and I bought four six volt golf cart batteries. After doing some research, they were cheaper than the ones at Costco, at Walmart, and at Sam's Club. There was a little bit of money for shipping, but it was still less than what it would have been at any of those other retailers. And in total for the four batteries, 
with delivery, $250. And finally, the inverter. I did go with an expensive, high quality inverter because I'd had inverters in the past that just were not good enough. I put down $200 for an inverter and I'm so glad I did. So that's the basic breakdown of cost. There are elements in there where you could be spending a lot more money, say on the batteries. There are the same batteries that I bought that cost $250 a piece, not for four, a piece. And those batteries will last a lot longer and probably maintain a charge for a lot longer But that's just way too much money for me So I skimped where it made sense and I and I put down extra money where it made sense and I gotta say I really think this system is the way to go. So that brings us to number three How much power can I get and what can I actually run with the system regardless of what size system you get? There are some electronics that just zap energy. They're really not practical to run off a solar system unless they're dedicated solar systems. In an RV like this where we want to run a bunch of various electronics, there were some things that we knew we weren't really going to be able to run. The biggest electronics to remember are anything that heats stuff up or cools it down, including like a heating pad, a electric heater, electric grill, a tea kettle a coffee pot, all of that stuff zaps energy. And then anything that cools stuff down, like a refrigerator, an air conditioner, those will suck energy away from your batteries in no time. There are alternatives to these things that I just mentioned. A lot of this stuff can run off of propane. So if you want it to be off grid, air conditioning units can run off of propane. And the refrigerator that we have here, you can plug it in and it can also run off of propane. Obviously a heating system can run off of propane. Things like coffee pots, heating pads. There's a bunch of little funny things that are made specifically for DC battery. And if you don't have to convert the energy from DC to AC, you end up saving a lot of energy. So you can look for products that are specifically for DC and get those. And then with these bigger units, you can look for ones that run off of propane or that are on an isolated solar system. So for instance, they do make a refrigerator that has its own solar panel and its own battery and that's all that that system would do. And that's very, very cool. What we are able to run on our setup, I think, is is phenomenal. Running a fan all night long was very important to us and we have been able to do it when we haven't had a full charge of battery. We've been able to run our Vitamix to make smoothies, to make sauces for our salads, and that's just like total bonus. I mean to have a huge Vitamix system running off of the sun is just it's just it's just badass there's nothing else i can say i just feel super empowered and cool and then we're able to charge our computers and our phones all at the same time. So with this setup, you will be able to charge all of your devices. You will be able to run basic electronics. You can run multiple lights. There's just a slew of stuff that you can run. Number four, is it easy to install? Can you actually install a solar system yourself? My answer to you is absolutely yes you can. Now I will admit, in my previous life, I was a contractor for about 10 years. So I've been working with power tools and hammers and electricity and houses and plumbing and all that stuff for a really long time. And I, I do have a very good sense of how to do these things. But honestly, this is basic. And all the information that you could possibly need to install this system, you can find in the article that I wrote about it just for you on thrivingminimalist.com. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like building a house and 1 being hammering a nail, I would say it's like a 2. It's like a 2, maybe a 2 and a half. You can absolutely do this. Number 5, is there any maintenance? This is a great question. I think it's important because to be aware that there is a half-life on our products. If we want that product to keep working for us, we have to pay attention to it and put some energy back into it. So a solar system is, for the most part, it does its own thing. But there are some things to be aware of. Probably the most important is refilling the water in the batteries. Now, not all batteries require you to refill the water, but the ones that I'm recommending do. And that's something that most people recommend you check once a month. Um, I think that's just a little bit overkill, but 
I'm gonna stick with it anyway because the batteries do cost so much money. So at least checking them every month and adding distilled water into the battery. The other thing to be aware of is, is Especially if you are traveling your solar system, things can happen. So since putting the solar on the roof, we have been extra super triple doubly careful not to drive under branches, under low hanging branches, or park under things that might drop like an acorn tree during acorn dropping season. Things like that. You just want to keep it in mind because the system, I mean the solar panel is actually pretty durable, but it's also has a potential to get damaged pretty easily being up there and exposed to the elements. And whether you have a system that is mobile or stationary, it is indeed exposed to the elements. It's got sun on it every single freaking day. I mean, ideally, uh, or it has rain or it has snow or it has ice and those things will wear the system down over time. I can't tell you how long this is going to last because I really don't know, but I do know that eventually it will break and eventually it will have to be replaced. I believe that I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it. I firmly believe that. But at some point, you know, it's gonna to have to be replaced. There's not much you can do about that. Okay, a great question. Number six, finally, what do I need to install this system on my own? Again, please check out the article that I wrote because I have links to all the products that I used, all the good ones, the stuff that I recommend. You can just go there, click it, buy it, be done with it. I'm also listing some basic hand tools and things like that that you're going to need when installing the system. For my purposes here, I needed the solar panel, the control box, the wires, the batteries, and the inverter. So really pumped to just share this system with you. I think it's really cool. I think it's a cool thing to bring into your world. So much, much, much love to you. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun talking about the solar system and I had a lot of fun writing the article. So please check that out. Much love. I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.